Good afternoon everybody, my name is PewPewQQ and today we'll be playing some Aliyah Yakta Est, which is a strategy game uh, set inside the Roman Civil War period. So let's get on started. I want to play a fairly easy scenario. It's called Marius vs. Sulla. It's the first real uh, Roman Civil War and we're going to be playing as Sulla. So, uh, what exactly does Aliyah Yakta Est mean? Well, uh, that's one. That's the saying: "The die is cast," and it was said by uh, Julius Caesar during his fight with uh, Pompey. Pompey. So, let's get on. Uh, pretty much started. Inside this scenario, we play as Sulla. We're command of the Councilor army and what uh, what happened recently was that inside the Roman Empire there was uh, quite a bit of dissent uh, especially inside the pursuit of democracy it wasn't like today but it was the first form of democracy I believe uh, inside the Senate at Rome uh, what happened was that inside the east over here there a few of the Roman uh, colonies were lands have been taken by the Pontic Hordes, which is our enemy, represented by the purple uh, people right here. And they've taken some of Asia Minor. We used to control the coast here, but we don't anymore. So the Roman Senate decided that it was time to gather an army and send it, send it over there to conquer them, right? And uh, who got that job? Well, we do. We are Sulla, we are uh, a war hero and veteran, so we are appointed the task of commanding the army to go and stop them. Now, at the same time, inside Rome, uh, the popular front, the popular party were, uh, how should I say it, the pretty much the uh, common man's party, the people who are really popular with the average folk, uh, pretty much started a rebellion against their government seeing as the main army was away inside Greece. And that's where the forces of Marius comes in. They fight for, well, the ordinary man pretty much, they wanted to uh, change the political uh, system over there. Uh, one of the things was that the Roman city-states were fairly dependent on slavery and it was obviously a big issue at the time so there's uh, there's kind of that political background to it. If you want an easy way to think about it, it's pretty much the red people over here inside the middle of the map have the right to go to the war with the purple people inside the east and the people who are blue want to start a war with the people inside the red to start a war with the people inside the purple. That's as simple as I can put it, and even at that, it's pretty complex. So, um, this is the battle report screens. So this is pretty much uh, how you conduct battles inside the game. Um, I can pretty much split this into a summary thing. Uh, your troops have like different rounds of combat. It's kind of like um, a turn-based version of the Hearts of Iron games says, uh, system where units take uh, quite a bit of shots at each other which are uh, pretty much over here listed at the bottom and this just goes kind of back and forth. So uh, we win, we killed quite a bit of their men, 5,000 of them, and we managed to take that city. Inside the east it looks like uh, the Byzantium will fall to the Pontic Hordes. Yep. So they're, uh, they're gone, and now the city turns purple. One of the unique game aspects inside this is that your troops um, are represented by these little counters, right? First and foremost, I want to get this boat back to our ports. So you go over here. Uh, your units are represented by these counters, like this, and your counters are split up into squads, or um, in terms of characters like uh, Sulla, they have different ratings which represent their stats, but for the most part you, your units are broken up into squads like these, and those squads are the things that pretty much take damage and go back and forth. 
if I if I were to pretty much have a garrison inside the city, then it will appear like this. It has this little one uh, pointing towards the city, and you can see that the troops just kind of pop out. And if I click somewhere else, they disappear. Woo! So, um. When you take the little province, that doesn't necessarily mean you have control of it, simply because the the city might not be taken. Right now, I want to split my army up into two portions, so I'll do that. Our main commander, once again, is Sulla, but down here we have some uh, minor level commanders, and what I've done is pretty much I've assigned each of them one command, uh, one legion of Roman infantry. So you can see that they've been integrated into the squad, and they're at the top now. One of the gameplay aspects is that uh, each unit has a command rating. So right now we can command a maximum of nine, and we're using eight, so it's not that bad. I want these people to go into Athene and kind of hold the line there, well, while. Sulla's main force is going to come over here onto this island and pretty much uh, mess up anything that is over there because you might have noticed that the uh, enemy we fought at, they oops, over here, not really sure how to pronounce that, uh, it has disappeared now. So that means it might have gone to Athens, might have gone to Corinthium, but most likely it will be up here. So that's kind of what I'm doing. In the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play some of these uh, diplomatic cards for actions. Uh, these are pretty much how the how you do things that aren't uh, part of the military inside this game. And what this will do is uh, it will pretty much allow us to get some more money by requisitioning them off the civilian population. Which means uh, we take from like farmers and people uh, inside the regions. It does cause some discontent, but overall it's for the good of us. And we're gonna spend that money to build a few more legions. Our money is located up here with a few more uh, resources such as victory points, morale, engagement points. Uh, the main thing is money. Everything else is kind of secondary to that cold harsh cash. We're gonna buy a few more of these uh, squadrons, the legionary cohorts, the legion squads, and we're gonna buy a few more legion commanders it's just so that we have a few replacements. In the meantime, I wanna check if we can actually uh, raise some more money, and yes we can. This is the second uh, option that you have for conducting diplomatic things and we can raise some more money like that we are going to. Alright, so that's pretty much all we're going to do. Um, since this game is based inside uh, particular historical periods, certain things will pop up like the Dalios Revolt. Apparently Dalios didn't like the uh, Pontics, so they decided to switch back to us being there main uh, host. The second thing is that the Roman Navy isn't up to standard. We can't fight the Pontic Navy right now, so this person right here is going to go on an odyssey and he's going to stop into Crete, uh, Egypt, I, I don't know where else, Cyprus, uh, Sarina, and he's pretty much going to gather us uh, some more uh, people. So that's him. However, right now there's quite a lot of these storms inside the sea which will prevent us from doing that. With that being said, I'm going to hold off uh, actually initiating that uh, journey. You might have noticed that the turns are kind of inside 30 day increments. The game is right now loading up the files to, uh, to play the next turn. It's a little resource intensive and it's not the fastest system. So just bear with it. Um, some of you might have played Pride of Nations. Oh, right now it's a uh, black screen for me. But um, as I was saying, if you've played Rise of or Pride of Nations, you might be familiar with the system. Looks like we're winning another battle. Yep. 
So, uh, this once again is the battle screen. We've won against the Pontic uh, hordes over here. However, most of this is just uh, the Greek revolt troops. And down here, where uh, it says ranged casualties and assault casualties, you'll see that we lost quite a lot of casualties. Um, but we we haven't lost anything according to these two panels, the two bottom panels, whereas the enemy lost quite a lot of Hellenistic infantry and quite a lot of line infantry. They lost 11 here and 4 here. And that's just because our forces, our 5,000 men that was lost was taken from all of these units. It wasn't taken just from one. So we technically didn't lose any squads, which is a very good thing. Down here, we see that we've captured some prisoners. That'll be very helpful later on. Turns are taken inside these 30-day um, increments. However, things occur on like every day. So, as you can see here, day 11, another battle. I believe we won it. Uh, we lost 3,000 men to 8,000 men. That's a victory in my books. And uh, this is simply because the Roman army is the best inside this time period. They're just simply it's too good. But the Pontics are really going to be a problem over here inside the east where there's just so many of them and we were kind of split up into two fronts, right? We had to fight the revolt inside, or rather the revolution inside Rome and then we had to switch over here in Greece and as well as uh, kind of manage the Middle East as well. Alright, so we've won a few battles, lost a few battles, we've gained some money from trade, and uh, that's pretty much what all of this says, and it looks like new political options are available. So, uh, we can conduct that raise money thing again, but what I'm going to do is, uh, is this sell prisoners option, which we can do once or twice every year. And what will happen is that if I go over here, uh, since we fought the Greek two times, we've gained quite a lot of prisoners. And what people people used to do inside this time period was that they would essentially follow the Roman army around. They'd be slave traders pretty much. And when there were prisoners uh, captured alive, they'd buy them and they'd pretty much become slaves if they weren't uh, Roman citizens. If they were like fighting somebody who obviously was not part of the uh, Roman Empire. I believe if you were part of the Roman Empire, you uh, special things would happen. Okay, so now the sea routes have been cleared to the island of Crete, so we're going to send uh, this guy over here, and he's going to try to com he's pretty much just going to try to command, try to, what am I saying here? He's going to come over here and try to convince their navy to join him inside our struggle. So that'll be fairly useful. Uh, we have some more money, so I'm going to buy another legion of troops inside Italy. And I'm actually going to get these people to bail out of there very soon. The Pontics are going to be raising some slave forces, which are represented by this. The popular front is uh, also apparently very popular with slaves, so they can do that. In our case, these forces right here are pretty much uh, locked into position, noted by the little lock symbol, and that pretty much just means that they're not usable right now. Uh, in this case, this is meant to represent some of these Roman legions weren't really sure who to uh, put their allegiances into. After all, things were a little shaky at this particular time. And next turn. So it looks like things are going fairly well inside uh, the Greek front. You can see that on the fortresses at the uh, at Silenes, Callis, I believe, and Athens. Uh, the little box, the little brown box, is now a two, and our and our main forces are obviously waiting outside. Uh, pretty much sieging those two provinces, uh, which means that the bulk of the enemy force has actually fled. They've gone into the city, and now we've pretty much surrounded them, and we're uh, trying to beat them back like that. 
It looks like a battle started. I'm not really sure what happened simply because my uh, my screen is frozen up. I'm playing windowed mode and I'm recording it in windowed mode, so it's kind of weird. However, it looks like we won a stunning victory. We lost one uh, squad of uh, Roman auxiliaries, so it doesn't really matter. But it looks like we destroyed 25 of their heavy infantry squads, and we've captured a whole heck lot of prisoners. We discover we've discovered uh, half of their force. That's pretty good. However, things inside Italy have uh, taken for the worst. Um, the popular front starts off being fairly weak, but as time goes on, they gain strength, and as soon as they gain enough strength to overcome my initial uh, holdings inside Italy, they're going to start to try and take Neapolis and Rome, which are the two uh, major cities we have to hold. You can see that the objectives are represented by the gold stars, the uh, silver stars, and our capital, Rome. If I can get this thing out of the way, it would be like a little, uh, like two stone pillar things. So that's kind of what that means. Well, it looks like uh, we can actually identify the two things inside this uh, particular city. It's the things with the two powers inside it, which is... Uh, so, in total they have 80, 80 power, and we have uh, 1400 power, which means that we're kind of wasting our time here. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to give this guy command of one legion, and I'm going to give him command all of, of uh, all of these ballistae. These ballast they just appear. Uh, this is because the. Oh, no, we can't actually do that, so I think I'll add this person to the Air Force and just kind of transfer them over. Now we can attack. What uh, what this game does is that it's there's an intricate system of how you attack and, well, actually, just attack really. You can see that there's the little envelope symbol above our units' uh, heads, and what that means is that they have uh, pretty much an activation check. It just simply, it's there to represent how the commander is dealing with all of his troops. If he has everything under control, then he can probably commence an assault, but if he can't, well, if like, you know, his camp is uh, pretty much a mess and everything, well, then he has to get that sorted out, so that's kind of what that means. Um, I'm going to get a small force to assault that uh, harbor on the island, and I'm going to move Sulla and his force down to Athens and pretty much commence an assault there. You can see that the populars army, the uh, the purple one, is sieging one of our um, one of our provinces over there. That province will probably hold out for two or more turns, and I'm fine with that. Popular front is uh, taking some of our holdings inside Italy. Not that big of a deal. So long as we win the sieges inside Athens and places like that, we should be fine. Yep, there we go. Like I said, inside sieges, you can't really back away, you can't really retreat, so we're going to be doing full damage, uh, they lost all of their men, their commander is obviously killed, and we took very little prisoners, but we only lost 500 men, that's definitely a victory in my books, and it looks like the people on the island actually surrendered, there was no uh, fight for that place, so that's pretty good. I'm not really sure if you can like siege one place and then move and siege another place on the same turn. Uh, for those who are more experienced on the adaptive game engine, that's what this runs on. Uh, could you tell me how to do that? Um, and just pretty much leave a comment about that. I'm pretty sure it's doable, but for some reason I haven't been able to do like multi-stage sieges inside uh, this game, or multi-stage assaults. But then again, that would also be pretty unfair. Well, uh, my time is up for now. We've covered five turns and we've pretty much uh, conquered the important parts of 
the province were taken Athens, all we need to do is take the lightly defended Corinthium, and then everything will be back under our control. You can kind of see that the little dots under the portrait represent the unit strength, so that's kind of what I'm basing everything under. Next time we'll take a look at Rome and we'll be stomping the Pontic army which is trying to cut off our supply routes. So this is PP Choo Choo, if you've enjoyed the video please like and subscribe to my channel, that would be great, thank you, and have a good evening I guess, bye bye.